Welcome to the Truth Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Benitez. Thanks for listening, for watching, for getting plugged in. I uh, love you guys. Today we're continuing our series called Christ Consciousness. This is episode three. And uh, I'll be honest, this episode is going to be probably, um, you know, the Bible talks about milk and strong meat and meat. This is going to be somewhere along the lines of meat and strong meat. And if you could truly uh, begin to listen and ask God, and we're going to pray that before we begin, and ask God for the spirit of wisdom and understanding and be open-minded, I'm telling you, this is going to set you free. This we're we're talking about Christ consciousness, but this specific episode I felt quickened by the Lord to talk about the dangers or detriment of being sin conscious. What is the result, which is death? So if you could understand and receive it with a humble heart, ask God for wisdom. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will quicken your mind because this is revelation. This is not a philosophy. This is not something that I learned from Bible school, cemetery or seminary. I didn't learn this from, um, you know, Bible. Uh, the Bible does say that Paul said, I didn't pick this up. I didn't learn it from man, but I was taught by revelation, by Jesus Christ. So this is something that you need revelation. You need light. And I'm telling you, light is ultimately what drives out darkness. Light, revelation light, revelation knowledge. That doesn't puff you up. Uh, head knowledge, just mental ascent, that puffs you up. But receiving revelation knowledge from above. Remember, in the Gospels, we see Peter uh, with Jesus Christ. Jesus was telling, hey, who do you guys say that I am? Some say you're Elijah, some say you're the prophet. And he said, okay, that's great, but who do you say that I am? And Peter spoke up, inspired by the Holy Ghost. And he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus Christ said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Why? Because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. So I want you to really... Um, Ask God for revelation knowledge, not only when you're listening to this podcast, but when you're reading the Bible, when you're listening to teaching, when you're listening to preaching, you, you, we need to come to, to uh, gaining revelation knowledge. And not just, the Bible says the letter killeth, but it is the spirit that gives life. So um, let's you begin with that. We're going to open with prayer and then we're going to get into um, the dangers of sin consciousness. So uh, let's just open up in prayer. Father, I thank you for everyone who's watching, everyone who's listening, everyone who's hearkening. People who are, who are hungry will be filled. I thank you, Father, and I ask you for the spirit of wisdom right now and understanding, Lord. In Jesus' name, quicken our hearts to understand, to comprehend, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So I want, uh, I want you to open up your Bible. Anthony, you have a Bible right there. I know, but it's much easier to navigate on this phone here. It's just so much easier, especially because I'm going to be talking about different things. So don't judge me, man. Uh, Hebrews 10, verse 2. Hebrews 10, verse 2. First of all, I want, I want you to understand, before I get into the scripture, that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the and one of the uh, effects or one of the results, because it had many, one of the results of that sacrifice was to produce no more sin consciousness. And we're going to see it very clearly in the scriptures. One of the results that the sacrifice of crucifixion, one of the results that it would bring in was that the worshipers once purged should have no more consciousness of sins should not be aware of sin, should not be sin conscious. This is a this is one of the results, man. So I'm not just I'm not just uh pulling it out because it, it I'm like I said in the beginning, it's strong me. And if you're able to receive it though, man, if you are able to receive it, this will bring you deliverance. This will bring you deliverance from freedom. This will bring you deliverance from uh from sin, really, because we're gonna get into it. Because when you are aware of sin, when you are sin conscious, it actually strengthens sin within you. That's what the law does. So if you're able to shift 
your mind. Shift your awareness from sin conscious to Christ consciousness, which is what we've been talking about these last couple episodes. That's going to set you free, completely free. So Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2 says this. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? And this is, this is we're getting right into the middle of a thought here. So I'm just going to summarize it. Hebrews chapter 9, read it for yourselves. Hebrews chapter 9, Paul talks about the, uh, com he's comparing and contrasting the Old Testament sacrifices with the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 9, he, he's going back and forth. He, he's given a description about the Old Testament sacrifices. And then, uh, remember, it was man who has divided the Bible up from chapters to verses, which is good. It's good for to, it's good to be organized. It's good to, to know. But you must understand that it is not a, that Hebrews chapter 10 is not a new thought. Hebrews chapter 10 is a continuation of a thought pattern, which he was going on about in Hebrews chapter 9. So Hebrews 9, he's, he's saying, hey, he's talking about the Old Testament sacrifices. He's talking about how, how they would constantly bring those sacrifices year after year after year. And it will continuously, read it for yourself, it will continuously uh, bring into remembrance those sins. So it was just a cover for sin. It could not take away sin. It couldn't take away the sin nature. It couldn't, it couldn't purge their conscience. All it could do was just cover sin. But th they, they would be continuously in remembrance of sins, of their sins. They will be conscious of their sins. So Hebrews 10, which were, were uh, Hebrews 10 verse 2 that we're about to read, this is a continuation, a continuation of his thought process in Hebrews chapter 9. So he's, he's going on and explaining that. Let's just start at verse 1. Hebrews 10 verse 1 says this. So he, he was talking about the law and the sacrifices in Hebrews 9, and then he says this in Hebrews 10 verse 1. He says this, For the law, having a shadow of the things to come, and not the very image of the things, could never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereon to perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? This is a question. He's saying if the Old Testament sacrifices could have made those worshipers perfect, then they would stop offering those sacrifices. Why? And then it says this, listen to this. Because the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more conscious of sins. So you have to understand that the Old Testament the Bible just says it was a shadow. It, it couldn't make the worshipers perfect. You go on to read in Hebrews and it says, it says that, but we have come unto Mount Zion, Hebrews 13. We have come unto Mount Zion where the spirits of just men made perfect reside. That's you and I. The Bible says that we have been perfected. The Bible says that we have been sanctified. The Bible says that our conscience has been purged. Hebrews chapter 9. It says our consciences have been purged. That's what the Bible says. It says we're sanctified. We've been purged. We've been perfected. Hebrews 13, uh, 13 says that we it says that we are now in Mount Zion where the spirits of just men, who's just? You and I. We are the righteousness of God. For Christ was made sin so that you and I could become the righteousness of God. And the Bible says that our spirits have now been made perfect. This is why. Many, many people don't understand this because they, ha they don't have a concept of spirit, soul, and body. And even if they vaguely do, they don't, they don't dive into it. Because if you would realize that and really meditate on that, you would realize that you are, you are three parts. You are a spirit, but you have a soul and you live inside this body. But in your spirit, you are perfect. The Bible says that you have been sealed in, in Ephesians chapter 1. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So in your spirit, you're perfect. In your spirit, it says we've been purged, we've been sanctified. And because we have been purged, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, because our, our consciences have been purged, because we are now perfected, because we are now sanctified, which was a result of the perfect Lamb of God, which the Old Testament sacrifices could never have brought that. He's just saying that. 
But the but now the perfect Lamb of God, when John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, this perfect sacrifice that Jesus Christ provided has purged our conscience. The Bible says that he would purge our conscience from evil works to serve the living God. He has purged our conscience. He has sanctified us. He has perfected us by the perfect Lamb of God. The spotless lamb has purged us. And the result, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2, the result of that, which the Old Testament could never bring, the result of this sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, the result is that we would have no more consciousness of sins. We wouldn't be aware. What is that word conscious? It means to be mindful, to be aware of sin, to, to, ha to have a focus upon sin. And this is so key. So I wanted to start with that because you must understand. The Bible says in Romans, I believe it's in chapter 5, Romans says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. You see, the law is not only the Ten Commandments. We see that very clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where it talks about the law was the ministry of death, the ministry of condemnation, which was written and engraved in stones. Because many people will say, well, that's the ordinances. Those are the ceremonial laws. No, no, no. Those things were written in animal skins. Those ceremonial, the Sabbath, the feast days, those were actually written in parchment and animal skins. What this is talking about, it says, it says the ministry of death, which was written and engraved in stones. What was written and engraved in stones was the Ten Commandments. Which was, which was the Bible says, I'm not saying it. The Bible says in, in Ephesians chapter 1. Verse uh, 15, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. It says that he has abolished the, eminent, the enmity, the enemy, which was the law. The law was our enemy. So when, we, when I'm talking about moving away uh, from sin consciousness, because you have to understand, and this is something that the Lord has shown me, and I pray that he would help me to really... Uh, convey this to you in a very clear, in a very clear, concise way. But I know for a fact this is going to take a quickening of the Holy Spirit for you to understand that when you become aware of sin, you put yourself under the law, even though you're a Christian. The Bible says, "For by the law is the knowledge of sin." So when you become aware of sin, when you become conscious of sin. You, you, you put yourself under the law and the result is death. And what is death? Death, I said it in the previous episode, depression, fear, anxiety, adultery, strife, envy, the sickness, all that is encompassed inside death. So when you become aware, when you have a knowledge of, of sin. The Bible says, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. So when you become aware of sin, you come under the law. And when you're under the law, it produces death. The very purpose of the law was to, the Bible says this, that, that I was alive. And I'm going to quote a bunch of scriptures right now. So just write these things down and, and, and you have to meditate. If you're hungry for the truth, the Lord will show you. The Bible says that, that, that I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. The Bible goes on to tell us that without, that without the law, sin was dead. Without the law, sin was dead. That's in your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56 says that the strength of, the strength of, of sin is the law. The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. The law is the strength of sin. The Bible says that the commandment came so that sin will revive and that sin would become exceedingly sinful. That's in your Bible. That when the law comes in, and we just read it, what is the law? The law is the knowledge of sin or to be aware of sin, to have the knowledge of sin, to be sin conscious. That is to be under the law. Sin consciousness is what the Bible calls condemnation. Why else, would you, why else do you think Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, Therefore there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ. It doesn't stop there. To those who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So 
what does that tell us? That means if you walk after the flesh, if you are carnally minded, the Bible says it produces death. But if you are spiritually minded, there is no condemnation for you. But if you become sin conscious, there's condemnation for you. Is it coming from God? No. It is you yourself put yourself under the law. So by the knowledge of sin, it brings and it produces death in your life. I want to show you um, a couple of illustrations. First of all, let me tell you this quick story, which is, which is amazing. I was listening to a man of God today, and he was telling me how uh, there was a Harvard medical study. Look it up for yourself. There was a, Har a Harvard medical study, and there was a conclusive result that these scientists, because their, their occupation was to study diseases, that's what they do. They just study diseases. They study the symptoms. They study everything about any type of disease. You name it. The, the, check this out. This is, this is amazing. There was a study shown that these scientists who study diseases, that every time they studied the symptoms of the disease, every time they became aware or had knowledge, catch my drift, every time they, be, listen to this, every time they had the knowledge or they were gaining knowledge of the sickness, when they were gaining knowledge of the disease, when they were getting knowledge of that sin, they would come under the, they would receive those symptoms and they would be calling out from work. Think about it. So they would study those symptoms and then that scientist would, would come under that, those same exact sickness. This is, this is a, a, look it up for yourself, man. What is that? That is, see, the more you study sin, the more you study fear, the more it strengthens you. The Bible says that the law came that sin may become exceedingly sinful. It makes your sin very strong to the point where it will take you out. So these scientists, they were studying different diseases, different sicknesses. And the more knowledge they had of that sin, the more knowledge they had of that sickness, the more they themselves re ended up receiving that same sickness. Isn't that crazy? I think that's wild. You see, so you have to have a knowledge of sin first. You have to, you see, the Bible, there's so much to this. Lord, help me. In the book of James, it clearly tells us that sin is conceived in the heart. Jesus Christ in the Gospels, when he was in his earthly ministry, his, disciple, he, his disciples, they were talking, and he said, sin is of the heart. From the heart comes forth. Evil things, adultery, murder, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Sin is of the heart. So you have to have a knowledge of the sickness in order for you to get it. You have to have the knowledge of fear before you actually receive fear. You have to have a knowledge of anxiety before you receive anxiety. Why do you think? Listen, think, come on. The Bible says in Ephesians that it is the wisdom of God that we preach, that, that the church preaches the wisdom of God against principal, powers and principalities. It, it is time for us to, to move past the milk, to, to get deep into the wisdom of God because it is the wisdom of God. You see, the devil is defeated, bro. All he has is lies and trickery and smoke and mirrors. But you know what takes that out is the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom. So why else do you think that there's Mental Awareness Month, Breast Cancer Awareness? I'm going to ask you a question. I haven't looked it up, but if I look it up, I can, tell, I can guarantee you the results will be conclusive. I'm going to ask you this question. Ever since they brought up mental health awareness, do you think the numbers came, went up or they went down? Ever since they brought breast cancer, and this is, <laughs> we're going deep right here. But ever since they brought breast cancer awareness out, do you think breast cancers went up or they went down? Those numbers, they went up. Because you can't conceive sin. You have to conceive sin first in your heart. You have to be aware of it first. You see, and uh, I was listening to a man of God. And he, he was uh, bringing in a pastor, and the pastor was like, hey, how come in your country, where he was at, there's so much uh, kidney problems, there's so much dialysis everywhere? And he said, well, because we're here, that's all we're pre, that's all, it's on, it's, on the, it's on the commercials, it's on billboards, it's on everywhere, it's the knowledge of sin. You see, the Bible goes on to tell us that these wicked men, the, 
the powers and principalities that they create, they invent evil things. In fact, I mean, there's so much, but there's a scientific uh, study out there called the observer effect. Look it up for yourself, and then I'm, I'm going to get into something that's going to it's going to confirm it in the scriptures. But there's there's a scientific uh, study out there called the observer effect. So unless something is observed, it doesn't exist. You see, so what am I saying? That w the minute that you become aware of sin, you have to have a knowledge of adultery first before you can commit adultery. You have to have a knowledge of anxiety first before you can catch anxiety. You have to have a knowledge of the sickness first before you can come into the sickness. You see, but what would happen if you if you and I would begin to discipline ourselves because we have all power. We have the the raising from the dead power within us. We have the all the the power of heaven and earth in us to discipline our minds and shift away and move away from sin consciousness if you i'm telling you you cannot be tempted with something you have no knowledge of you can't be tempted with something that you do not think about you see so the enemy's move is for you to be aware of that sin because when you become aware of it you come under the law for by the law is a knowledge of sin when you become aware of it when you come under the law, it, it, that sin gets so strong. So I want to show you something in the Old Testament. We see this very clearly. When the children of this is, a, this is an Exodus, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, the Bible tells us that they were loaded down with silver and gold. They they passed the Red Sea with silver and gold, and they had in all their journey through eating the manna, the quail, they had that silver and they had this, their gold. But the men, but, and they never wore, they never had a desire to, to, you never see them once have a desire to build a golden calf to worship. But what do we see? They had the, they had those resources available to them to do so. But the minute the law came, listen to this, the minute the commandments came, and said, you shall not worship any other God. You shall not make any graven image. All of a sudden, the law came. The Bible says that the law came so that sin may revive. That sin may become exceedingly sinful. And the law is the knowledge of sin. That, or you can say, the knowledge of sin came. And when the knowledge came, that sin was activated. You see, the law was given to activate the sin to activate the flesh. So you have the Israelites loaded down with silver, with gold, and they never had a desire to create this golden calf. But the minute the law came in, the minute the knowledge of sin came in, the minute that, that the word of God said, you shall not worship any other idol, you shall not make any graven image, the minute that came, we see them doing what? We see, it, we see, we see the desire activated within them and then they, they, they made a golden calf and they're worshiping it this was right before or i'm sorry right after they said all that you tell us to do god every commandment you tell us to do we can do it the law came and all of a sudden they had those resources they had the silver and the, and the, they had the gold all of a sudden when the law came when the knowledge of sin came that desire sparked up within them, and you see them building a golden calf, bro, to worship it. Right when the right when the camera says, "Don't do it," they said, "Oh, yo, we we can do everything." Listen, they walked out. They were they were loaded with silver and gold, and then uh, they said, "We can do anything that you tell us to do." God, sounds like a lot of religious circles. I'm holy. I'm perfect. Okay, so the law came, and all of a sudden, immediately, that that flesh was activated. And you see them doing exactly the opposite of what God just commanded them not to do. A man of God said this. He said, if you want, he said, if you want uh, a sin revival in your church, preach sin. It's easy. It's counterintuitive. But the Bible says that his ways are higher than our ways. It's very easy for you to say, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't, don't commit adultery, don't do this, don't look at porn, don't smoke weed, don't, don't do this, don't do that. But you don't realize that the minute, you're, you, the minute you introduce that, 
it's strengthening that very sin. If you want someone to commit adultery, you just begin to tell them, don't commit adultery. Whatever you do, don't do that. You bring the knowledge of it in, and that activates that knowledge of sin, that law. That's why the Bible says that there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But if you begin to walk after the flesh, if you, if you begin to be sin conscious, it'll strengthen that sin. And I'm telling you, this is the way out. Because the law is the only weapon that the enemy has to bring you under condemnation, to, to, to destroy the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 that they were that all powers and principalities were spoiled on the cross. Jesus Christ says all hail, meaning all complete, all power on earth, in heaven, and under the earth has been given to me. So we need to we need to wake up and we need to realize that this is this is so important. Because if you become aware, if you tell yourself, don't look, don't look, don't think about a pink elephant. Don't think about a pink elephant. Do not think about a pink elephant. What are you going to be thinking about? A pink elephant. If I tell you, don't look at my phone. Don't look at my phone. Whatever you do, do not look at my phone. Guess what you're doing? You're going to, you're going to be looking at my phone. That's the, that's the law. You see, the, no, the law in of itself is the knowledge of sin. That's, that is what the law is. So, so in the same exact way, when you drive by, why do you think, especially in L.A., you see these billboards with, with booze, with partying, with all this stuff, because you have to come to, you, ha you, you and I, we need, to have, we need to have a knowledge of that in order for us to be enticed. But what would happen, and I'll end with this, but what would happen if you and I would, re would move past sin consciousness, and that, just like I've been talking, I'm, I'm taking this specific episode to tell you what sin consciousness is. But what would happen if we, you and I would move past sin consciousness into Christ consciousness? You see, instead, it is our responsibility to begin to ignore those things. You cannot be tempted with something you have no knowledge of. Remove the law, remove the power of sin. Where is that in the Bible? 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 15, 56. The strength of sin is what? The law. Romans chapter 5 says what? The law is what? The knowledge of sin. Remove the knowledge of sin. You have removed the strength of sin. That Why do you think? In Philippians chapter 4, the Bible says, think on these things. Think on things that are pure. Think on things that are true. Think on things that are praiseworthy. Is sin, is adultery, is all those things praiseworthy? Pure? No. Well, I'm not thinking, no. But you're thinking about that when, when, when someone is telling you, be holy. Don't do this. Don't, you're, you, no matter what angle you're, you're shooting it at, you're still thinking about it. But on the contrary, what would happen if you would just shift your focus and begin to think about Christ in you? What would happen if you, begin to, if you begin to shift your focus and think about the goodness of God, the fact that I am holy in the Spirit. I am the righteousness of God. I am a new creation. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What, do you, what would happen if your focus would be on that? You see, the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the knowledge of sin. Remove that and you're walking in victory. So I want to leave you with that, that it is, it is a removal of sin consciousness that will produce victory in your life and in my life. This, listen, we all want to live, at least if, if you're born again, really born again, we all want to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. We know that. If you're born again, it's within you. We all want to live a life that pleases God. We all want to live a holy life. But you're going to make mistakes. You're, you're not perfect. What? Is that like a revelation? Yeah, you're not perfect, bro. And we're not going to be perfect until this flesh, uh, this corruptible inherits incorruption. This mortal puts on immortality. So the, the more that you train your brain to be Christ conscious instead of sin conscious, that desire to live holy, that desire to live pleasing to the Lord, that desire to live in freedom, just like my hat says, freedom. Don't it feel good? That desire that you want is found when you 
look away from sin, when you remove sin consciousness, and you look to Christ. Philippians 4, think on these things that are pure. The Bible says, consider me, consider Jesus. What does that word consider mean? It means to meditate, to earnestly look to Jesus. I'll leave you with this. You look at you look at the Apostle Peter when he was walking on water, the minute his attention, or you can say the minute he was conscious of who? Of Christ. The minute that he was Christ conscious, he was walking on water. But the minute that his consciousness looked away and began to look at the waves, began to look at the natural, what began to happen? He began to drown. But the minute that you focused, the minute that he was he was conscious of Christ, he was he was superseding natural laws. He was walking on water when his attention was fixed on Jesus Christ. But the minute that his attention was turned, he began to drown. That's the same exact way. The Bible says, consider Jesus the author and the finisher of faith. Consider Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Think on things that are pure. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Look to me. Focus on me. When you do that, I'm telling you, you'll walk on water. And none of, these, none of these plagues shall come near you. Don't look at the sickness. Don't look at that, whatever it is. Begin to look to me. Look to Jesus. And you'll walk on water. You'll supersede these natural laws. And I'm telling you. And, and that holiness that you and I long for. We're, first of all, we're already holy in the spirit. But I'm talking about in conduct, in character, in words, in thoughts. That holiness that you and I long for in those areas, it'll be a fruit. The Bible even tells us in Romans that we have the fruit of holiness onto salvation. So, but we first need to hammer this down. Remove the law, remove the, the knowledge of sin, remove sin consciousness, and the strength of sin is gone. So I want to leave you with that, and, and I really want to encourage you with this. Every, like I quoted a lot of scriptures. I quoted about a lot. I want to challenge you to begin to write the scriptures down. Uh, go to Google. We have Google. Type in those keywords. Write these scriptures down. Meditate on them. Pray in tongues over them. Pray. Ask the Lord uh, to quicken your mind, and he'll help you. And this revelation, like I said in the beginning when we opened up, this is, this is meat. This is strong meat. But this is something that the Lord wants to show you. And if you would humble yourself, you would ask him for the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit has been given to you and to me to quicken the truth. The Bible says that he will be a he will come and bear the uh, he'll be a witness to the truth. He would show us and guide us onto all truth. And even now, as you're listening to me, I know for a fact that the Holy Spirit is he, he, this is bearing witness to your spirit. I know for a fact. So begin to um, move past the traditions and doctrines of men and look for the truth. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, knock and the door will be open unto you. So I want to leave you with that. This is your key to your victory in life. So continue to stay plugged in. Share this uh, video podcast. Share, share this with your family, with your friends. And it really, really, really helped people. So I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for watching. I want to give you an opportunity right now and encourage you to sow a seed into this ministry. If this ministry has blessed you, has given you wisdom, revelation, any light, any deliverance, if it's helped you, I really want to encourage you to sow a seed into this ministry. The Bible tells us that if you have reaped spiritual meat, it is only right for the minister to receive of your carnal or material things. So in the same exact way, I always give this illustration, check this out, that if I go and I get a good burger at In-N-Out, which I love, I'm not, you're not going to see me go to Subway and pay them for the meat that I just had. You know what I'm saying? So if this ministry has helped you, has blessed you, has encouraged you, your family, I really want to encourage you to sow into this ministry. And also, I want to let you know that this gospel, the gospel of grace, is, be, is going to be preached to raw people unchurched in the projects, in the inner cities, all throughout the region of Los Angeles. If you want to be a part of that, 
If you want to sow into a ministry that wins souls, if you want to sow into the ministry that preaches the grace, the goodness of God, if this ministry has blessed you, has helped you and your family, then it is your greatest opportunity to partake of the anointing that is upon this ministry. And I'm telling you, you will be blessed. The Bible goes on to tell us that if you sow uh, sparingly or a little bit, you'll reap a little bit. Just like a seed in the natural. When you sow a small a bit of seed, you'll reap a small harvest. But if you sow a big seed, you'll reap a big harvest. So I want to encourage you, go to truthevministries.com forward slash give. Click on the give, just like my wife says, click on that give now and you'll be richly blessed. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys.